So I have the time as 7.39, and I'll call the public hearing and regular business meeting of the Mayor and Council for the City of Snellville, Georgia, for Monday, October 26, 2020, to order. Uh, we do have a quorum present. Everyone's here, and we are socially distanced, so I've removed my mask so that you can hear me in the microphone. Uh, for, we'll start off with our inv invocation by, with Melvin Everson. Madam Mayor and Council, everyone, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come now just to ask your blessings upon this Mayor and Council as they discuss and agree and vote on several matters pertaining to the citizens of Snellville and the city itself. Thank you for their leadership and their respective places. Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for the leaders. We pray that after everything is over with, November the 3rd, we will unite as Americans and move forward to make this nation even a greater nation. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, and we ask you to bless those men and women who stand in harm's way, first responders, uh, service men and women, firefighters, etc., protecting the liberties and freedoms that we so richly enjoy. And Father, let us never forget that you have blessed this nation for so many years. And we put you at the helm no matter what happens on November the 3rd. We know you are going to keep us in your protective arms. This and all prayers we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Melvin. And now we'll have the Pledge to the Flag led by Solange Destang. And now, under ceremonial matters, I'll be administering the oath of office to Carrie Hetherington for her seat on the Planning Commission for Post 5. Carrie has been a longtime volunteer here in the city, so it's exciting to see her take this next little step with us. 
Now we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? Motion, motion to approve the minutes of the October 12th, 2020 meetings. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. There is six in favor and none opposed. We have no invited guests tonight, no committee reports. So now we'll move to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the agenda for the October 26th, 2020 meeting. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second. Please uh, signify your acceptance by raising your hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Now we'll open the public hearing. We do have a big item on the uh, public hearing agenda tonight. It's item A. It's the second reading of Ordinance 2020-14, the adoption of the Unified Development Ordinance, our new UDO. I'll turn it over to Caleb to uh, present that. There we go. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council members. Uh, I'm Caleb Rossico with TSW. And um, we are at the end of what has been a very long and um, I think very significant task to prepare a unified development code for the city of Snellville. As you may remember, a UDO was uh, something the city decided to look, move forward with in order to create a document that would implement existing plans, be much more easier to use and administer than what you currently have and then very importantly, align with various engineering, best development practices and economic development policies of the city. And so that's what we've been working on for uh, over three years now. We have had a, a process that included significant community outreach, stakeholder interviews, meetings, policy sessions with you all, and a series of websites and emails. From that, we have taken various aspects of your code of ordinances and put them together into this draft UDO for consideration this evening. I'm not going to go through all of the various aspects of the UDO because it is several hundred pages, but I did want to talk about some of the highlights. First and foremost, if you've reviewed the document, which I know you have, um, you'll find that it is uh, much more consistent and user friendly than your current zoning and development regulations. We've attempted to create a one stop shop for everything related to development and very importantly, have written it for members of the public, not attorneys, not staff, uh, but people who don't know a lot about zoning and want a document that's easy to understand and user friendly. And so as part of that, we've made use of graphics, tables, and very importantly, clean, clear English language. Now, what are some of the overviews? Well, um, as you know, we've cleaned up a lot of your current zoning districts. We've renamed them. We've consolidated uh, some of your commercial districts, your RHOP districts, and have also put together a couple of other new zoning districts that would be available in the future for rezoning, including one on North Road, and then a, a new mixed use district, an RS5 sort of cottage residential district that would be available to this council and future councils if, if deemed appropriate. Additionally, we have incorporated improved design standards citywide. In certain districts, there are now building standards that are the highest level of design standard in the city. There are general architectural standards that really build on your current standards and even residential standards, which I know is something we work very closely with the mayor and council to develop. Additionally, there are revised standards for buffers, screening, and then street, streetscape citywide. Now, there were a couple of revisions that have been made in the current version before you this evening that are new since the Planning Commission and directly based on some of the feedback we received from staff and yourself. Um, first is we have updated the parking requirements. We were initially uh, very aggressive and put very, very low parking requirements. And then based on, I think, some of the conversations you're having with uh, uh, developments in the city, decided that we would be um, a bit more conservative in the amount of parking that was required. So we've raised those a little bit. Uh, additionally, based directly on your feedback, um, we have put in place standards for parking 
uh, in driveways. You remember we had a lot of conversation about how much parking you can have and this and that. Uh, it wasn't clear if a person could actually park in a driveway in front of the house, and we made it clear that yes, if you have a driveway leading to a garage, um, you can park in the driveway. And then finally, one of the main changes is um, I think you have a current application that's having some fencing issues, uh, or you had a current application that uh, had some fencing challenges. And so based on that, we have updated standards to clarify that fencing is allowed uh, adjacent to a landscape strip, but uh, not within it, uh, only if it's required by the use standard. So along all of your streets, um, you'll have to have a 10-foot landscape strip, and then any fencing would have to be behind that. Now, we also clarified that they would have to be a wrought iron style uh, with brick or stone columns, which is a, a, a really a best practice for, for that provision. And then finally, uh, one of the major aspects of the UDO is uh, I spent many, many, many hours cleaning up your use provisions. Uh, all of your uses now are defined. They're all in a single user-friendly table. And then very importantly, if they have standards, there's a link that you can go to the table and click on and you'll find what the standards are. So we pulled these from various parts of the code and put them into a single user-friendly section. And then finally, uh, to remind you all, there are enhanced tree protection standards. We worked very closely with staff to create incentives to encourage the preservation of existing trees rather than planting small trees across the site and have also given the city the uh, authority to require property owners to remove hazardous trees, which was something that uh, we had discussed at our work session. So those are some of the highlights of the code that is before you for your consideration this evening. I would like to say uh, it's something that I am extremely proud of. I think this is one of the best ordinances I've ever written, and it really does, um, I think, owe itself to some of the feedback we've di received directly from all of you and from the greater community. Um, I would encourage you to uh, adopt the code. I think it, it is really going to be a critical point in the city's history of making the city revitalization continue. And uh, I, would, I, uh, I, I hope you're as proud of it as I am. So I'd love to answer any questions you might have or uh, allow the public comment uh, as applicable. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. And we appreciate your hard work on this. I know it's been a long, long labor of love, hopefully. <laughs> Any, count, any questions of council for Caleb? Okay, thank you, Caleb. With that, this is a public hearing, um, and this is a document that the public has um, put in comments and made recommendations for as well. And we will open up the floor now to public comment. If anyone would like to make any comments, issue, or give us any concerns, or other considerations before we uh, make a motion and a vote, please step forward. Don't everybody rush at once. Okay, I see no public comments, so I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Madam Mayor, make a motion that we adopt the Unified Development Ordinance, Ordinance 2020-14, um, version dated, the third version dated 10-26-2020. There is a motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-14. Is there a second? Second. Is there any comments from council members? Mr. Um, I know a lot of the people in this room have given their input over the last four years, may even have been longer, um, in helping us make this an ordinance that we can all be proud of and that will help spur development here within the city and make it much easier for us as citizens to be able to look to one document that has all the information you need in it when we have questions, when there's an issue with a development that's going on, it's all in one place. There's no more of this running hither and yon. So I'm very proud of this. I'd like to salute the staff and Caleb for the <coughs> hundreds of hours that they put into it. And I just ask uh, the rest of my council to support this. Thank you, Todd. Anyone else? 
Seeing none, then I will ask for a vote. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Yay, congratulations, Yay. Caleb. And now uh, item B is related uh, to the UDO. It's consideration and recommendation on resolution 2020-16, amendment to table two, future land use categories and corresponding zoning districts of the Snellville 2040 comprehensive plan. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, and I'd just like to uh, echo the same sentiments uh, going through this process, mayor and council in the community and um, TSW and Caleb uh, particularly was a very prof professional process and uh, like you said a lot of time was put into it to make sure that uh, it represented Snellville and Snellville's best interest and, and that was the main uh, factor I think that helped uh, kind of glue it together and we think that's been achieved and just want to remind everyone just like any other ordinance in the city um, these documents are living documents just like the zoning map that change through time and um, I believe Gwinnett's on version 11 of their UDO so as the times change uh, we'll can it'll continue to evolve and uh, won't be patchworked in like our old ordinance so anyways uh, with that out of the way uh, we've got your next item uh, up for consideration and basically this is the 2040 comp plan this this use table uh, directly corresponds with the zoning districts before when we did the 2040 plan ahead of the um, unified development ordinance those were different districts there we've now renamed several of those districts added some new ones uh, combined some old ones with some new ones and then the the provisional uses as you can see the a the C, this allowed, considered, and where it's blank, it means uh, not considered. So then we had to take the 2040 plan and, and make it match to our new UDO. So that's what we're here um, to, to consider. Um, you can see on the, on the left where RS 150 was changed, or 180 was changed to RS 30. It's basically just a name change. Um, we added the R5 district, which there's smaller lots that we see that are most, um, most probable to see in the future, like the last probably 10 neighborhoods we've done. We consolidated some multifamily districts and uh, set standards for all those. We consolidated um, the residential, the RHOP district into one district, and that was, that was probably one of the most confusing ordinances I've ever read. We um, enlisted the TCR, the residential, the mixed use. We did take BN, which used to be neighborhood business, and combine it into BG. It was only, I think, less than 20 parcels. Um, so that district wasn't really needed anymore. It's, uh, that was for a time when there were small corner shops on you know, the two lane 78 out there. And um, then of course incorporate all those changes and where they'd be allowed on the future land use map of you know single family residential and low density residential and on down the chart to tell you and this is our guiding document to consider when we use for rezonings and uh, uh, things of that nature land use plan amendments so it fits with the UDO and the, and the classes so um, we did get approval from DCA the Department of Community um, affairs to go ahead with the amendment to the comp plan as well. So I would ask that you would approve this as well. Thank you, Jason. Does mm -hmm. any council members have questions? Thank you, Jason. Mm -hmm. This is under the public hearing, so I will open the floor to any public comment. If you would like to make a comment, please step forward and state your name and address. No one's rushing the microphone. So I will close the public comment and ask for a motion. Motion to approve resolution 2020-16, amendment to table two, future land use categories and corresponding zoning districts of the Snellville 2040 comp plan. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. 
There's a motion and a second. Any comments by council members? No? Nope. Then I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Next, we'll have item C, second reading, ordinance 2020-13, consideration and recommendation on amendment to the city of Snellville official zoning map. Mr. Thompson. Thank you. And uh, as I basically just briefed you on the changes we made to the districts, it's now shown uh, directly on the map. And as um, our ordinance requires, we have to have an official adoption. And I think um, outside of those changes that I listed uh, previously as far as the zoning districts, you'll notice the, the other uh, largest change is the expansion as we've discussed. Let me clear it up for you. Um, the expansion, you see the black dotted line, um, the expansion of the town center overlay um, to encompass those areas around the town center so that we can influence architecture and use standards in the same way that we would in our town center core and, and those that have been previously zoned to town center districts. I believe we've had a few developments pop up in some places that we would uh, you know, like to take back and this provides us um, the protection um, that we need to keep that from happening again. So um, that's uh, the, the biggest change to the map. And like I said, an official um, documentation of an approved zoning map, I, I think the last time we did one was 2010. Uh, it'll bring the map current, make it official, and uh, then we'll be done with uh, this portion of the UDO and then we'll move forward into uh, implementation. Any questions for Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Jason. And this item is also under our public hearing, so I will open the floor to any public comments. Seeing none, <laughs> Seeing none then I will close the public comment and entertain a motion. Motion to approve Ordinance 2020-13, Amendment to the City of Snellville Official Zoning Map. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any comments by council? No. Nope. Then I will call for the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Thank you, Jason and Caleb and TSW. You guys did an awesome job on this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now uh, we'll move on with the agenda. We have nothing under the consent agenda and no old business. So we'll move into new business. We have item A, consideration and action on Department of Planning and Development fee schedule. Mr. Thompson. Along with uh, the changes we made uh, within the UDO and um, the zoning map. Um, there's some fees that are uniquely associated with it that we needed to update. Um, copies of publications um, needed to be changed to development ordinance and then um, a couple of fees that uh, due to um, the complexity of a zoning certification letter that usually in you know 20 years ago said your property is zoned BG and had a signature on it. That was ten dollars. Now we're spending, you know, uh, several hours on each letter because you're digging up conditions, you're digging up uh, certifications, past site plans. These are now turning into legal documents that mostly lenders are using for fund verification and rights of use. So um, the ten dollars doesn't doesn't cut it anymore. So we'd ask for a flat rate of uh, $50 uh, for the zoning certifications. And I feel that that's uh, really required. Um, public signage has gone up for these. And since uh, we charge the applicant for the sign and then buy the signs, we were taking a loss on signs. So um, the fee for the signs went up uh, to match market conditions. Now there's 75 bucks. Uh, we, you know, overtime, material, all that. 
uh, goes up as well. And then uh, we've added uh, a new application instead of, you know, instead of just the rezoning, we have a change in conditions application, which we've dealt with many of those, but have been treated as rezonings in the past. And there's been some confusion there as far as fees from uh, uh, people making applications. So we would ask that we just add it uh, here. And that's an overview of the changes. It's really only substantial changes of uh, the, fee, the fee schedule for us. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Thompson? Nope. All right. With that explanation, uh, I will entertain a motion. Madam Mayor, make a motion that we approve the Department of Planning and Development fee schedule amendment as shown. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. It's a motion and a second. Any comments by council? All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Next under new business, we have item B, amendment to the master development agreement. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the seventh amendment to the master development agreement to be extended to November 16th. 2020 there's a motion is there a second second there's a motion and a second all in favor please raise your hand that is six in favor and none opposed so that brings us to the end of our council agenda so we'll go on to council reports and we'll start with Solange Destang. Good evening. Um, I don't have too much to say tonight, so it's going to be kind of short, so I'm trying to speak. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I just wanted to um, just bring awareness that um, we are going to enter into the Halloween, like the festivities for the kids over the weekend. And we know that the popular hours of Halloween are usually between the hours of 5.30 and 9.30 p.m. So I just want to bring a little awareness to everybody who drives, okay, to be a little bit cautious when you drive in the residential neighborhoods, because children are usually excited, you know, um, especially having been indoors with the COVID since March. So, um, Let's just keep our eyes open when we're driving and not um, speed in the neighborhoods. And please put our phones down so we can see where we're driving and be careful with that. Um, also, um, this is something minor, but just to, I'm looking forward to the daylight savings time on November 1st. And that will be at 2 a.m. And we will gain an extra hour, right, um, Councilwoman Lansky? Um, <laughs> <laughs> in which we can spend time, in which we have that extra hour to spend time with our family and loved ones. And on that note, I want to thank you all for coming out. We appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Solange. Council Member Warner. Totally, for as listening to Solange, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> Christy. <laughs> no, this, uh, this weekend um, on Saturday, Halloween, from 6 until 8 out here in the City Hall parking lot, since many neighborhoods will not be having trick-or-treating and uh, with social distancing requirements, uh, a lot of the normal things that our children do won't be able to go on. So our Snellville Police Department has graciously decided instead of driving through the neighborhoods, handing out candy like they've done in years past. This year, they will have a candy parade, I guess, out here in the City Hall parking lot. If uh, people who'd like to attend come between 6 and 8,
come in on the Clower Street Drive, come down, loop around through the parking lot, and you never know, you might even see some really scary looking city council people there. Um, Y'all have a good night. Thank you so much for attending or watching, whichever it may be. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Councilwoman Schultz. I did, you know, because I called your name out earlier. I know. Councilwoman Linsky. Thank you. That's why um, you were looking like a deer. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> On Thursday, we will be interviewing four new potential students uh, for Snellville Youth Commission. So we're looking forward to that and expanding a little bit more. And also, please mark your calendars for Friday, November 13th. That will be the Battle of Snellville, and the Mayor's Trophy is up for grabs. Brookwood High School and South Gwinnett. Last year, South Gwinnett won. Hoping that will be the case again this year. So please come out, and thank you for coming out, and please don't forget to vote. Thank you. Christy? Councilwoman Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> I was just already looking at you. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to extend a thank you to Kelly McLoon and to the other members of the STAT organization that are responsible for our scarecrow on the green and the sunflowers that are uh, in, in front of uh, City Hall and the uh, police department. Um, they have been there have been so many nice comments about them on, on uh, Facebook pages, and I think people have really, really enjoyed seeing them, especially since we couldn't do things like our fall, fall uh, festival this year. I know that was a lot of work, <laughs> and it's very, very much appreciated, Kelly. Thank you, Gretchen. Mayor Pro Tem Emanuel. And when do I get my drill bit back? <laughs> this past Saturday we had another cleanup on Oak Road and we're making progress we only found five bags of trash first time we did it we had 33 bags so people are uh, hopefully being a little bit more conscious about not throwing things out but they're still <clears throat> I don't know they're just oh we don't need this whoosh, out the There's, window I mean we found beer cans which is typical uh, a half-eaten meal from probably the racetrack gas station on the corner and it's it seems as though it's it's ironic that there's so many pieces of trash thrown out in one spot you know it's like everybody leaves racetrack and oh I don't need this anymore mm -hmm. so you have these concentrations but it is getting better and uh, I know there's some other groups especially at Hickory Hollow <laughs> Hickory Hills where they're doing some cleanup as well. I had hoped we were going to get a little bit more citizen participation in the clean and proud efforts, but I think it'll come, but I think the city's looking better and people are taking more more care of it. So, spread the word to your neighbors, go out and pick up trash. It's a great way to spend a Saturday morning. Anybody needs a mattress? There's one out on the <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and go pick that up for us. Um, thank you, Dave. I've got a couple of items under the mayor's report. First, I'd like to welcome Carrie Hetherington again to our planning commission. We're very excited to have you. I got to go out to the Georgia Knights Prep Academy football game. Um, their homecoming game was last Saturday, and I got to flip the coin. I know Christy got, went the week before and flipped the coin before their game on uh, Sunday. And uh, you know, talking with the organizers of this group, um, these are uh, football players who uh, didn't quite have the grades or the academics um, or, or maybe even the skills, but they're talented ath athletes, couldn't quite get into college. So this prep uh, academy gives them additional time, football play time, coaching, and then help with the academics to get their test scores up and their grades up so that they can go on to uh, play football in college. So it was uh, a lot of fun and uh, it, was, it was a fun thing to do and the weather was, was perfect. Um, again, also I would like to thank Kelly McAloon for 
uh, all of the work that she put in on the the scarecrow out on the green and the um, the sunflowers I know it took a tremendous amount of effort and uh, she just is always looking for the next thing to pop and uh, I have gotten I and I told her this today or yesterday I've gotten so many compliments just in the last week or two about how great Snellville looks um, and and they're they're loving the decoration uh, I've seen a lot of my friends have posted pictures with their kids or grandkids out there in front of the sunflowers and everything so it has been a great thing to do since we're in COVID and can't do all the other fun things we're normally doing um, also like to give a shout out again Kelly McAloon stat with the scarecrow contest uh, Kelly and I went at the last couple of days and went and awarded the first second and third place prize winners we had Charles Minter with the Karate Studio won first place and then the Snellville Historical Society won second place and then we met Sarah at Pleasant Paws who uh, won third place and we were talking with her I don't know if you've seen they're right on 78 there by the Army Navy store and their their scarecrow is a dog and it's got it's got fur it's real poodle fur they groomed dogs there and they took the fur that they groomed off and and stuck it on the uh, scarecrow so they get a lot of sniffs from their their doggy patrons there um, and on a sad note I would like to offer condolences to one of our uh, URA and DD uh, or DAS members Brandon Abbey he lost his wife on Saturday due to COVID um, Brandon I, I mean they're a very young couple probably in their 30s and they've got a very young daughter um, so just please keep him in your prayers because he was also sick um, as well so I'm hoping that he's recovering from from COVID and um, and can help you know it's gonna take him time um, but just offer the condolences and if you would raise up some prayers for him and his family that would be appreciated and with that, I will close the mayor's report and open the floor to public comment. Haven't had very much tonight, so. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We got a taker. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Briefly, um, compliment, um, just to give a shout out to Dave Emanuel. As you all probably don't know, I'm a member of the Gwinnett Clean and Beautiful. And every time I see his post about cleaning up, because I travel all over Gwinnett County and North Fulton, and I see more and more garbage thrown out on the highway from, you name it, furniture, old mattresses. So anything we could do to help keep Gwinnett clean and beautiful, I appreciate it, because it not only makes the county look seedy, but it's also dangerous for the motorists because my sister-in-law up in North Carolina, her sister almost was killed by a piece of metal on the road that had fallen off a truck. So I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, don't worry, the people will come. Just keep spreading the word and they will come. Also, Gwinnett Tech will have its virtual graduation on November, November the 9th. As I was sharing with uh, Councilmember Linsky and the staying salons there, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do that. This is our first time, but the students are very patient and they want to have this and we're gonna do it for them. It's November the 9th. In addition to that, in March of 2021, you will see a lot of heavy equipment at Gwinnett Tech because there's a massive renovation project for building 100 that will commence around the 1st of March. And once that is completed, you will see our new three-story structure along I-3-16 uh, there, where we're gonna house our IT department, um, cybersecurity, everything is gonna move from my building, which is economic development, up to the new three-story building. Total project for all of that, and I wanna commend Governor um, Brian Kemp for keeping that in his budget. The total project for all of that is 34.8 million. It is massive and it's a long time coming for Gwinnett Tech and all of Gwinnett County is gonna benefit from that because we've been waiting for this and we finally got it and you'll see dirt turning over 
come March. So when you come out there, I'm going to invite you all to the groundbreaking when Dr. Kennan does that. When you come out there and you see all of this equipment moving, you now know what's going on over there. So we're very excited about that. And the <clears throat> U.S. Senate just approved Amy Coney Barrett as the newest Supreme Court Justice, so continue to pray for her. And I'll leave on this note, and I say this with all sincerity. When this, I have two minutes, when this election is over, I know we all have our candidates, but when this election is over, when the people have spoken, as I've attempted to do with all of my elections, I work with whomever is in power as best I can. I would respectfully disagree with you if you're wrong and it's against what I believe. But more now than ever, more now than ever, this nation needs to come together. For serving 23 years in the military and having lived overseas under other governments, I still say America, the United States of America, regardless of what's going on now, is the best country on the planet. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And I want us to unite behind whoever is in power, pray for that person, and let's do what we can to keep America the shining light on the hill. Because as President Bush told me when I visited him in the White House, what we're facing now is like we've never seen before, this enemy. We must not falter, we must not fail, we must prevail, or America will be no more. And I've done too much, and my father's hanging out there, and thank you, Kelly, for that, on that pole out there, World War II veteran, he actually saw the smoke clouds from the atomic bomb. He actually saw that when he was fighting on the island of Saipan. And as a 23-year veteran myself, I want my grandchildren to grow up with the same opportunities I have in the land of the free and the home of the brave. So thank you all, each and every one of you, for what you do on a consistent basis to make Snellville a great city to live, work, and play. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Melvin. Anyone else? With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second.